If you've been watching our videos here at Rogers Gardens, you know the importance about growing the right kind of milkweed. Here in Southern California, we should only be growing the native milkweed for the monarchs. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, stop what you're doing, go to our website or to our YouTube page and check out all the videos we have there all about the importance of growing the California native milkweed. If you're already doing that, let's talk a little bit about the maintenance of it and how to care for it because it's a bit of a learning curve, especially if you've never grown California natives. There are some special things you need to do about that. So, that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about here. I'm gonna let you know how to do it, how to take care of it, what to do when you start running out of milkweed, which is a constant panic call that we get here all the time. I'm gonna go over all those tips for you. I'm Sarah Smith, a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens, and let's get right into it. If this is your first year growing the right kind of milkweed, the California native milkweed, you're gonna notice that it's gonna to start to go dormant. If you've been doing this for a couple of years, you kind of know that, but I'm constantly getting calls from people who are kind of worried about the fact that their milkweed starts to look kind of funky in the fall and totally dies down in the winter. That is a good thing. That's what you want it to do. That's why this is the right kind of milkweed to grow. You want the one that actually goes dormant. So people kind of panic because they're not used to things going dormant here in Southern California. Our plants usually don't do that. So in the fall time, if it's starting to look particularly bad, the leaves are completely brown, it's not looking good at all, you can cut it to about six inches from the ground and just leave the stalks there because it's pretty much died back. If there's still some green foliage, try to live through it as long as you possibly can because that green foliage is actually still photosynthesizing and adding all those good sugars down into the roots. So it's storing up all the energy for next year. So try to leave it up as long as you possibly can if they're still green. If there's brown, go ahead and cut it down to about six inches. So you're gonna leave a little bit of a stem there and that will kind of slowly die down on its own over the winter, store all that good nutrients in the ground so it comes back with a nice flourish the next year. A lot of concerns I hear from people is that when they're looking at their milkweed, they notice, especially around at the top, tiny little orange dots. Those are actually oleander aphids. And that also is kind of a good thing. They are sucking sap from the plant, taking a little bit of energy from the plant. They're not gonna harm your monarch caterpillars at all. But what it is a good sign of is the fact that your plant has not been treated with any chemicals. We know that if we see bugs, those plants don't have any kind of synthetic systemics going on. So it's a good thing. If it gets really out of control and you notice there's way too many, you can gently remove them. You can use a paintbrush. You can kind of wipe them off with your hands. Of course, be really careful that you don't have any tiny little eggs on the leaves. Usually the caterpillars eggs are gonna be on the tips of the leaves, not on the stems so just make sure you're really paying attention to that they're a white color not an orange color and make sure of course that you don't have any little caterpillars in the way that you might accidentally smush so you can remove them a little bit if it's stressing out the plant too much but if it's not just kind of let nature take its course that is the whole point of this is we want to let nature do the thing it's supposed to do and it's the whole reason we're having problems with the monarch population in the first place is way too much human interference another concern i get from guests all the time is that their caterpillars have completely eaten through all of their milkweed and they have none left so my number one advice to you at that point is do not run out and undo all the great work that you've done with your native milkweed and in a panic buy tropical milkweed. Especially don't buy it from a store that you don't know whether or not they've treated that milkweed with BT, which will kill all of your baby caterpillars. I've heard so many sad stories of people doing that just in a panic. They run out, they buy the tropical, they feed it to all their little baby caterpillars and they all turn black and die. That's because that milkweed has been treated with BT. The nurseries do that because they don't want to grow a bunch of plants, have them all eaten down before they send them out to the nursery. We actually contract grow our milkweed, the native only, to not be treated with BT. So that means when you buy your milkweed from us, you'll often see baby caterpillars on it. So don't undo all that great work that you've done. There are things that you can actually give your older caterpillars instead 
instead of milkweed, only if they're in the older stage. But if they've eaten through it and they're bigger, you can give them pumpkin, which is amazing because this is the time when you can buy pumpkins in the fall, right? You can also give them a little bit of cucumber. Sometimes they'll eat melon, butternut squash as well. Not watermelon though, however. I notice it's usually only honeydew uh, or cantaloupe, but the larger caterpillars will eat that. So if they've eaten through all that milkweed and you've got a big bunch of fat, hungry caterpillars, they will eat this. The smaller ones will not, however. But that's another thing that I want you to all really think about. If this is the time in your garden when your milkweed should be dying down, you don't wanna encourage all those butterflies to keep laying more eggs. The whole point is have them do their natural cycle. And the natural cycle is that milkweed out in nature is starting to die down, no one's tending it, and that's when the super monarchs come out, the ones that overwinter that don't need to lay eggs, they stay around till the springtime when the new stuff comes out. So really think about what you're doing in your garden, really think about what the natural process should be, really think about where you're buying your milkweed, make sure it's not treated, make sure it's a California native, and that's where you can feel really confident that here at Rogers Gardens, that's the only only thing we sell. So I know here in Southern California, we are so used to having perfectly manicured gardens. That is something that we really pride ourselves on because you can garden year round here in Southern California and it's really hard for us to see things go dormant. But in this situation with the milkweed, this is where you really need to kind of give up a little bit of control to mother nature and let it do its thing. So when it starts to look ratty and die back, don't cut it back until you really see that it really doesn't have any more green. Try to leave as much green on it as long as you possibly can because it's storing all that good stuff in the roots for the next year. And don't run out and buy the wrong thing just because you're afraid that all of your caterpillars are starting to starve because they've eaten through it all. Make sure that if they're bigger ones, you can give them that cucumber or those pumpkins, but just let mother nature take its course. That is a really important part of nature. Nature. And it's a really big reason that we're struggling with the monarch population in the first place is all the human interference. So that being said, make sure you come in, get your untreated milkweed, make sure you have enough plants, about 10 plants in a yard is good. As it grows, it's gonna start making more and more and more. And make sure you tell all your neighbors, anybody you know that you see growing that milkweed that has the red or the orange or the hot yellow flowers that they're growing the wrong kind and they should only be growing the native. If you're watching this video and you have no idea what I'm talking about and you're thinking, oh my gosh, all my milkweed at home has red or yellow or orange flowers or hot pink flowers, go check out our YouTube page. We have so many great videos there explaining all the ins and outs of growing the right kind of milkweed for your monarchs and how to support that monarch population. We have tons of great videos on our website as well, so you can go to the Learning Center, read the blogs, watch all the videos. There's all kinds of great stuff about all kinds of topics. So any kind of gardening question, I guarantee we have a video for it there. If you haven't signed up for our mailing list, make sure you do that as well. We send out really great emails. They're beautifully put together that show you all the fantastic stuff we have going here at Rogers Garden. So that way you're not late to the party. We always have really fun things that happen, but a lot of that stuff sells out really quickly or just runs for a short period of time. So make sure you go and check that out as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being concerned about those monarchs and doing the right thing for them in your garden. We really appreciate all of you and we work really hard on making sure everybody understands what to do here at Rogers Gardens as well. So thank you so much. Be well, be safe and happy gardening.